Namaste beautiful yogis. I wanted to come on with a hormone video, just a quick hormone video, uh, just to add my two cents to the sea of discussion. <laughs> I feel like there is a lot of misinformation or a lot of confusion uh, on hormones. And even though today's video is not going to be, um, I'm not going to exhaust all the thoughts I have or even half of the thoughts I have. I just want to add a few things. I saw a video by someone I follow on Instagram or Facebook. He's on both. And I think Samuel Lee, I, I want to say, I could be wrong, but uh, he does a lot of those spiritual kind of videos. And although i think he's an md but he does a lot of like spiritual content anyways he was saying that the menstruation or even the womb is a sacred portal um, and menstruation is meant to be painless and it's a time of cleansing it has been um, uh, demonized and it's it's made into this painful shameful experience and i fully uh, kind of had a a kind of a feeling response to that as a yes it is a time when uh, first of all if we look at things from german new medicine perspective if we befriend in our thoughts feelings and uh, lived experience and belief system so belief system is really um, kind of like a catchy place where we can get trapped and create an experience that doesn't really reflect reality so through a belief system we can create a reality is what i'm saying in simple terms and if we truly believe uh, that menstruation is painful we have all these conditions etc we feed into that experience further and we continue to create that loop um, now just belief obviously without action is not necessarily going to completely resolve everything but starting with a belief system that phrases is very important embraces embraces uh, our femininity our um, womb uh, the womb as a portal or five dimensional or whatever however you want to call it portal that allows us to uh, process trauma and uh, femininity and reality through a different lens different perspective um, so the womb is when it opens during birth that's obviously a very obvious sign of a portal opening from another realm into this realm we usher something into this realm so in that same sense menstruation allows us once a month once a lunar month to experience cleansing of emotions that should not build up in our life uh, if we they build up they're gonna peak during menopause or uh, during the middle uh, age crisis or during the second Saturn return um, Pluto or Uranus um, uh, uh, major aspects during the midlife crisis they're during the midlife crisis those are not crisis aspects those are aspects that will push us to to rid ourselves of the masks, to, sh to take masks off and be more of ourselves. So in many ways, menstruation prepares us for that period when we're going to be more of ourselves. So things that have helped me, this is kind of like, I didn't mean this to be a spiritual intro. I didn't mean to go into that direction, but because I don't have notes, um, I wanted to just share things that have helped me in a very simple way and I've shared them before but I will just repeat myself so that maybe uh, you hear it for the first time or maybe it empowers you. Uh, circadian rhythm um, uh, uh, balancing so uh, just sunlight in the morning and um, um, sunset in the evening that sets our circadian rhythm allows us to have proper uh, thyroid hormones um, uh, sex hormones, um, uh, all the main hormones, cortisol, um, insulin, etc. Um, it really helps with balancing the hormonal system and the entire system really. Circadian rhythms is everything. I think hormones are downstream from the actual um, um, system. They're not the runners of the system, they're the reflection of the system. So Circadian rhythm, I think, would be first and foremost. And in circadian rhythm, I would include, um, um, I would in definitely include grounding. Grounding, so sunlight grounding, all the natural elements that help us uh, align. 
avoidance of harsh light in the evening, uh, those um, um, uh, LED lights that constantly flicker. Use your camera on slow motion to record lights in your house, at your work, etc. that you could potentially in, are in position to remedy. If you're recording on slow motion, you see how much they flicker. Also see their temperature. Are they blue? Are they soft yellow? You don't want blue light in the house at night at all, ever, if possible, in your own house. Now, when you're traveling, I had to deal with that when I was traveling with uh, rental places, with uh, hotels. I don't have control over the lighting, right? So I had to just kind of deal with it. But luckily during travel, we're a lot outside. So I do get a lot of the natural light outside. Um, Chastity tree berry, it's absolutely phenomenal. I feel if you get your right dosage, I've spoken about this before, if I get to have a dose, I get nausea from it. If I get a lower dose and not every day, it balances my hormones phenomenally. And I am um, what you would call symptom free, right? Like there is no PMS, no menstrual cramps. Uh, my periods are on time, on, the, on exact time, and just symptom free. I don't have uh, major mood swings. Now, a little bit of moodiness, I feel it's almost healthy, a little bit of emotionality, I should say. It's healthy because we have to constantly process our emotions. We are emotional beings and, and we're constantly clearing uh, things. Grief, we have laughs, um, uh, sadness, etc. Those are natural human emotions. They have to be processed. We can be devoid of emotion. That's just not the point of existence. Uh, the point is to process them, to flow them out. And a time of menstruation, PMS period, is a really powerful time to flow them in a healthy way, to clear them, to cleanse them, to face them, to embrace them, right? All right, so um, that is... Uh, some of the main tools progesterone cream i've spoken about it if you want to learn more about it from the place i really had a strong uh, moment uh, from was from the john r lee books i'll list the books below um, i have uh, menopause and perimenopause his books and hormone ball uh, hormone balance i think it's called books he has quite a few books on hormones and they're absolutely fantastic he speaks highly of progesterone cream over the counter it's just a yam extract cream um, that really helps with um, opposing um, excess estrogen xenoestrogens uh, estrogen speaking from plastics from um, um, uh, hormones in food, from um, toxins, from glyphosates, etc., pesticides, etc. So, because we are exposed to too many uh, estrogen mimicking, even from perfumes, from fragrances, from cosmetics, from uh, I don't know, from plastic clothing, etc. So, progesterone can really help with opposing uh, or uh, uh, going into those uh, receptors and not allowing that extra estrogen to stick around. Um, very good. His books are really great for kind of uh, helping you wrap your head around the progesterone cream. It's over the counter. It's inexpensive. I'll list the ones that work for me. I've so far used three and I like them all. It also helps with sleep and as you know sleep is really important. Um, uh, I. Uh, um, it helps with uh, really uh, providing you with uh, deep quality of sleep. I've noticed that when I use a progesterone, I use it in actually maybe a third or a quarter of the dose that's recommended. So if it's one pump, it's recommended. I usually use way less than that, like a quarter of a pump. I just kind of squeeze out a little bit and I place it where the skin is thin. I notice it really improves my sleep quality. Now, I already had good sleep quality. I find that having a boring routine at night is really important for just a really peaceful deep sleep at night. Um, boring because it's just a repetitive routine. I play games with um, with my daughter and they're kind of boring games. We kind of like the boring games at this point for that reason. Nothing too exciting kind of board games. Lately we've been playing uh, Guess Who. And we like it. We like the fact that it's boring and it makes us sleepy. Um, so a boring routine that gets your mind 
to an empty place where you're not worried about anything. You're not rehashing the day or worrying about tomorrow. You just kind of drop everything and float in weightlessness and worrylessness. That's the state we want to be at before bed. Um, I also like to wear a very dark silk mask. I've shared it before. I'll, I'll try to list it below. It's, it's a game changer. I can't sleep without it. I can't go anywhere without it. I travel. It's always in my purse if I travel. I find that it makes me sleep so well, so deep, so it's just fantastic. Um, now, um, I've prepared this quote one second uh, for this video. And I want to read it to you before I kind of wrap it up. Um, um, so um, observation and experience is a way to validate your, um, uh, to, to, to create um, a way to live. Mm, so all science, so this is a quote by Leonardo da Vinci. All senses are vain and full of errors that are not born of experience, the mother of all knowledge. So when we talk about science and all of that, we have to always remember that experience is the, 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 the mother of science. If it's not lived through experience, uh, we, uh, um, we are really um, kind of floating floating around and not discussing uh, real life, um, real uh, stomatic knowledge. There is a few more quotes in that uh, regard. No man's knowledge here can go beyond his experience. John Locke. Um, uh, but that's the main one, that everything has to be the true method of knowledge is experiment. William Blake. Um, all life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better. That's Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, oh, there is a Buckminster Fuller one. There is no such thing as a failed experiment, only experiments with unexpected outcomes. But, all right, so that's a little different, but still pretty cool. But my point is you have to come from experience and that's why I'm sharing my experience rather than what I've read and all that. Now, another thing is to uh, balance your hormone levels or cortisol stress hormones through exercise the right amount of exercise so too much exercise can really put you in overdrive very stressed out uh, uh, if your cortisol stays elevated you actually experience muscle wasting um, low energy um, poor quality of sleep um, weight gain even if you're exercising extensively so that's why i recommend less exercise that leaves you energized so you can do other things you're not going to be under exercise if you exercise daily you're always going to have a high energy day when you're going to go for it i'm right now doing all this kind of very heavy bulgarian um right now i shot a bulgarian um, um split squat type of uh, routine that was absolutely br br brutal <laughs> brutal so you're not going to be just because some days are lighter you're not going to be under exercise you're going to feed your body with movement that's the point point. and another thing is i have noticed the further i go into somatic awareness and kinesthetic uh, um, kinesthetic intelligence the less i work out for to failure for reps for um, um, measurable things. I do a few um, reps that I really uh, feel and, and I don't even mean I feel them uh, muscularly. I mean they are well, I feel embodiment during them. I really am present in the rep and that builds muscle far better than doing 12 reps or doing for failure or uh, massively increasing weight. I'm increasing weight, so that's not necessarily to say it's something wrong uh, with working out to failure, sometimes do, or with working out for reps, I also sometimes do, or increasing your weight, I, uh, uh, currently I do with the heat and jumping but my point is to really be present in your workouts. That is something that happens with experience over time the longer i have uh, i have committed to um to becoming what i consider myself a really deeply involved in uh, fitness person in i'm very experienced in it 
the more my experience becomes different to what you would expect from a science book or how um, people that are new to fitness approach fitness. They really go for it hard. They're almost like religious zealots. They, they just have a different, you, I can always tell when someone is new to uh, exercise. They just don't connect to it the same way as someone that has embodied it over a long period of time. And that religious zealousy can burn you out and you may or may not stick long term. So that's why I teach this kind of method that is very um, almost different to what I see, but very effective and very practical. Um, what else? Protein. Too much protein. Everybody is recommending so much protein right now and it just raises your cortisol levels, your insulin levels. It's really so on the protein. If you don't crave it, don't, don't force yourself to have protein. It's uh, right now they're pushing protein on every account I follow, every uh, perimenopause recommendation and perimenopause I come to find out it became really popular in 2020. It just became caught fire and it went from kind of a positive thing, shedding light onto a transitional period in a woman's life that's really important, into becoming this kind of selling product, um, sweeping under the rug every symptom that you may potentially have as perimenopause, where it could be actually a health. Um, a, your body communicating something about your health and it has not enough to do with perimenopause. Yes, hormones are shifting, our microbiome is shifting, our everything is shifting and it affects the way we process reality, process food, etc. But at the same time, it's not something to blame everything on, right? So that's another thing. And protein has been way too recommended. It's very acidic, it leaches, it weakens your bones in excess. It's absolutely unnecessary in the amounts that people recommend it. You're far better off building a muscle from an alkaline diet with a proper amount of amino acids from just any calorie of whole food. So that's kind of all the things I have I have come to realize or to really kind of think about. And because I'm running low on, um, on uh, video time, I'm gonna wrap it up here because there's so much more to say. But let's keep it sweet and short. If you have additions to what I just said, please add them. If you, um, if you have um, uh, suggestions, questions, all of that, please add them below and I'll be back. Of course, I gotta clean up my <laughs> um, uh, phone and I can record a little more but that's what I wanted I wanted to add a few of those things that have helped me circadian rhythm light grounding um, progesterone cream vitex other herbs cleaning the liver all of that really important and keeping my uh, diet alkaline so important and a proper amount of carbohydrates sugar that boosts the thyroid sugar from from honey or from fruit, it's absolutely fantastic for boosting the metabolic function and the thyroid. Uh, and all the, the hormones in the body and cleansing the liver and uh, keeping the kidneys healthy, the heart healthy, etc. The energy levels high, etc. Alright, so um, that is all for today. Post your um, additions into the comments, please, and I'll see you very soon. Namaste.